Welcome to the show, the place where we fix the unfixable, where we turn rust into polished metal miracles. <laughs> That's right, we're back on the Stitches Challenger again. We're going to continue working on that rear piece that we started on on our last episode, but we're probably going to take a little segue into a little extension. Well, just this is going to be a mystery for at least 30 seconds, so watch the show intro, get an overview of all the stuff we're working on here, and then we'll be back together. I'm Mike, and if you didn't figure it out yet, this is my car shop. Working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. As always, I probably don't spend nearly enough time planning the project. I just tend to be more of a ready, fire, aim kind of person. So sometimes I have to redo things, but I actually did spend some time thinking last night and recently about what I wanted to do in today's episode. And well, first of all, I, I think I hurt my head. Um, I am a very fast thinker if you give me enough time to do it, but I'm not very good at it. Having said all of that, I realize that we do have a lot of flex in this side of the frame as we've discussed on many episodes. And if you haven't seen that, then just go back and watch those episodes because I don't want to repeat myself as much as I do repeat myself. And in fact, I'm probably repeating myself by saying that I don't repeat myself. I don't know. But I realized that one of the things that I need to accomplish is to figure out how to make a trunk extension for this side. So first of all, if you don't know what a trunk extension is, let me educate you on that. Because I know we have people of all kinds of various education and knowledge and experience levels. So um, I try to meet everybody where they're at. So if you know what a trunk extension is, fast forward 30 seconds. The rest of you can stay here and then we'll catch up to those other guys in just about 30 seconds or so. So basically, a trunk extension is an extension of the trunk floor um, that meets the quarter panel. So it's a piece that comes from, well, let's just show you. I don't need to explain everything. So a trunk extension is the extension that goes from the edge of the trunk floor, which is here. This trunk floor is cut off because of all the frame rail work we've done. But it goes and extends the trunk floor over to here. And then from there, it goes down to match the bottom of the quarter panel. So this is the piece that was on the driver's side that is rotted out terribly. And this is what's left of the trunk floor extension. And then this is the piece that goes down and matches the quarter panel. So we need to make a piece that goes over there to fill in from here where the trunk extension starts out to the quarter panel and down to meet that new quarter panel. So I realized that we probably need to start this before we continue on with what we've been working on in our last episode, which was this piece here. And before I get to doing this part here and the rest of it that goes here, I kind of have to have a game plan for all of this down in here because, well, it's just kind of like a logic puzzle. The other thing that I realized I want to do is because of the weakness of this along here on the top, and you can kind of see that we're rotted, I want to make a small L piece to go over this as well to give that more strength because this is kind of a main support here on the car. I feel very fortunate that we actually have as much of this one as we do. It's obviously missing some here. Um, but for the most part, it's fairly intact, so I can make a template to make this work. Now, we're going to have to do a little edge tipping here, um, but we're probably going to make this in two pieces. Where the factory one was all one piece, I'm probably going to make this part here, and then we'll make the part that goes up here. But I really need to be able to make this to this new quarter panel once we're ready to attach that, 
because that really gives this body a lot of strength. I'm not going to get every detail of this, but I do need to kind of separate this piece of the quarter panel from this inner extension so that we can get this piece laid out. We've got some compound curves that need to be made. And well, this is gonna be a fun piece because it's got beads in it and it'd be a great opportunity if I had an English wheel, but I don't happen to have one. So we'll probably put the pipe anvil to work on this. Uh, we've got an edge to tip here. I don't know how we're gonna build this exactly. And that's gonna be the fun because it's just going to be a complete figure it out as we go. We might even make a big piece of scrap metal. I have my little spot weld drill tool, but I probably won't use that. I'll save that for pieces that I'm actually gonna to wanna to reuse. Since I don't intend to reuse any of this, I will probably just use a big drill bit. And of course, I've got a small drill bit in my drill. I just need to go through and find where the spot welds are here. Yep, there's one. And just kind of mark those to snap out. I could just take my air chisel and go along there, but eh, I kind of want to preserve as much of this intact as I can. Maybe actually, as I look at this, I might be wiser to just take my cutoff wheel and run along here and save this as it is, uh, rather than try to pull all that apart now that I think about it. So again, thinking on my feet. Um, oh, I see we do have the entire trim piece for the wheel opening. That's good. Uh, so I can take that piece that's on the floor over there and this piece here and throw them both in the trash. Just like that, we have a piece now that we can start making a template from. I decided to go ahead and just cut off all of the pieces, crappy um, quarter panel, and uh, rather than try to split it all off because I realized as rusty as this is, I probably was going to do more destroying of the um, of the piece that I'm trying to copy than if I had just left it alone. So, and we're going to do this in two pieces. So. This piece up here that comes this way, we're gonna do separate from this. So I wanna make just this piece right now. Um, so I need to make, probably make a template. I gotta think about that a minute. I could just trace this out on a piece of metal, but I'm feeling like with the curve it has in there, even though I know it's bent some, I'm uh, feeling like probably it would be better to make a template and then go from there. I don't always make templates. Sometimes I'll just use the piece of rusty metal as my template, but I think in this case, it's gonna make some sense to try to do that. So let's find some decent cardboard here and we'll go from there. If you remember from back when I was doing the frame rails, I just buy poster board. I got this at Walmart. Um, Shirt cardboard is great. You don't want corrugated because it's really hard to make a template out of that. But this is a really great thing to use here for templates. You can just kind of trace this out. I'm just kind of lining up this upper edge, approximated. I'm tracing what exists here for a line. Notice I'm rolling this down. If I didn't roll it down, here's what would happen. This line would come back to here, and we don't want that. So this line would come into here, but by rolling it, we end up with a curvature that is going to land approximately. Now we also have to add a flange onto this. Maybe a little bit wider than that, but that's pretty close. Okay, then we're going to roll out here. Kind of shifted that a little bit, sorry. Yeah, we're okay there, okay, good. And then roll this up to trace that bottom edge. And only ballparking. 
again, my, my edge kind of rolled a little here. So I'm going to bring that back. And then this edge is all gone. So I have no idea what it's supposed to look like. But we're going to ballpark it. Because we're still going to, there's a flange on this also. Um, and if this was here, I would be tipping it up more like this. So I'm going to probably make this a little bit bigger. Just so I have extra material in here. And I think that's a good template to work with. So we know we have our straight edge across the top and then here. Um, so we'll cut that out and uh, see where we go from there. It also looks like this bottom edge has got about, oh, three or four. It's got a little bit of a bend right in here. And then I think that bend kind of comes up this way, like so. So ish, you know, we're not going to make it perfect, but uh, we're, we're trying to get a piece of metal that we can work with and start making it look like that. I probably am not going to put this here. Um, maybe I will, I don't know. That's really an assembly thing, but, uh, you know, I may incorporate some drains into this. I don't know. This car's never gonna really see weather, so I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but um, you get the idea of what we're doing anyway. Just to give you a close-up look of the template piece that I've started tracing out there. And then if you come this way, you can kind of see the piece that we're emulating. Oh, furnace shut off. Beautiful. So you can kind of see both of them kind of laid out ish in parallel sort of kind of. So this kind of brings me to a little bit of a segue here for just a moment. Uh, it's been mentioned by people who have been here working on this or helping me around the shop. Why don't you throw out all this old rusty metal? Now you're seeing why. Because I know I'm going to need something as a baseline and as a reference to work from once I start rebuilding something. If I was buying parts, wouldn't be that big a deal. You can buy this trunk panel extension for anywhere between 80 and $150, depending on who you get it from. What's it gonna cost me to do this? 10 bucks in a couple hours time. So, uh, you know, piece by piece, if you've not been around the channel before, there's an episode here about what I have spent on the Stitches Challenger so far. Um, it's not much, including the purchase price of the car and the 440 that I have for it. It's less than a couple thousand dollars, uh, including all the new materials, including the new gas tank, um, the new tail lights, and everything that I bought for it. I just don't have much money into this car. And if I had purchased this car, um, like a lot of people want, they want a couple grand just for the car, and then you start buying new frame rails, and well, all that costing is there, but we would have probably eight or ten thousand dollars into this car just at the point it sits right now for what I've gotten done. And I've got less than probably less than 2,500 bucks in it. I don't know, go watch the episode because I haven't spent much since then. So we just take out our handy dandy little shears and run along. Remember, you're gonna be making this out of metal. If something is off, you cut it off and weld a new piece on and you throw it away. And start over again. And I'm giving myself a little extra room in here because that's so rusty back there. And then once we get down to here, I'm pretty confident that we're close, but I'm still giving myself an extra eighth inch or so. There we go. Save this piece for later. But now we have a fairly good representation of the trunk extension. I'm going to nip out the corner here. Let's see, this is going to bend up this way. And so which way do I want to go here? Yeah, probably down here maybe. And then up this way. Just taking a guess, don't know. Because we're going to have this bending here and this bending here some. And I don't know, and then this whole thing has got to kind of bend this way and then and then we lost the piece, and oh, it's over there. I don't think, 
don't think there's any bends in it this way. Maybe, we won't know yet. Um, we'll just go with it. So we're gonna get a piece of metal cut out like this right now. So we interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. I'm on a cutoff wheel, so I gotta run to Tractor Supply and I will be right back. Well, I'm back and I bought another 15 pack of DeWalt uh, discs. These are four and a half by 45 uh, thousandths of an inch with a seven eighths inch arbor. They're the thin ones. And uh, I like to use those because you can cut curves and stuff a little better with them. I could just buzz this with the plasma cutter, but I don't know. I feel like maybe going this way is the way to go. We'll see when we get into it. So there you go. But <coughs> When you take your time like that with a grinding wheel or a cutoff wheel like this, you can really cut some nice shapes. And uh, that's why I chose to do that over the plasma cutter. You know, I can buzz that off nice with a plasma cutter too, but I think this was just the way to go here. So, throw that over there. And come and get our template. I think we're looking good. Yep. We are looking very good. So now we got to decide how we're going to bend this. Um, so first thing I want to do is get my rusty piece of metal back over here, lay them out next to each other, and then come up with a game plan. <laughs> okay, we're looking pretty good. Um, I think the first thing I want to do is put this in the pipe anvil and get some of this bent the way that I think it should be. Um, I may put this detail in, I may not, as I mentioned. We're gonna have to tip this edge, but I can tip that edge after, uh, and I can roll these in after, and this bottom edge will be easy enough to do after also. Um, so I think the first place to start is to take this over there and uh, try to get this arc somewhat similar. We may pull the quarter panel off of the car and, and help fit it that way as well to just see if we're getting a proper contour. We also have the um, other side for reference, but we, we still have a large part of the old quarter panel in. So I think we'll, we'll get a pretty good approximation of our curvature. Uh, I may do a what I call a brake line technique as well, and I'll show you what that is to get the curvature off the other side. Um, and use that for reference as well because the other side is still all intact here. So I spent like 10 minutes laying on my back under the car to create a profile for what this curvature is off of the other side. So this is actually where it goes is right in here. And that's pretty much the curve that we're gonna be trying to put in this piece here. I prefer to use a piece of straight brake line. I don't have any, I have a spool, so I had to straighten this out. So it's a little bit wonkier than I, than I like, but uh, I use brake line for a lot of things like this. I've used them for making roll cages, uh, to you know, just and then for duplicating profiles of curves. But I think this is going to get us a good idea, uh, a ballpark at least, so that if we put this over in the pipe anvil, 
and I believe it tapers back to where it's almost flat back here. Um, I think we're going to get a pretty good uh, representation of this. And of course we have the new quarter panel uh, to mate this with as well and we will definitely be having to fit that there. But let's go over to the pipe manual really, and get started on this. And I need to make sure that this is the inside. I don't want to bend it backwards because I've done that. And then you have to start all over again and I hate that when that happens. I was also going to mention this metal is not very clean so the marker is not showing up real well. But it's fascinating if you put just a light dusting the primer over that marker, all of a sudden it pops right out. So I've got my profile piece here. This is the side that we want the curve to be on. It starts up here, so we'll stick this down in our pipe anvil and just start bending it little bits at a time. close now. Still needs a little more. Unbelievable. Where do we need to bend it though? Let's see. I guess it's actually a little bit too tight. So we can just flatten that out a little bit. That's all right. There we go. We're really close there. Feels like it needs to come a little bit back here. That's pretty close right there very really close right there and it flattens out as it comes back this way so let's go lay that next to the other one and we'll see what, what, what it looks like I feel like we need a little bit more in here maybe that's a little better it's all ballparks Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good representation to start. Could be a little bit stiff, but we gotta remember we have to tip this edge, we've gotta tip this edge, we've gotta tip this edge. So there's a lot of edge tipping to do. Um, I think we'll take the quarter panel off of the car, lay it on the trunk and just kind of get this in place and just see what it's gonna look like. I should have realized that this is just way too long because we have all of this extra material here, all of this extra material here, and then all of this extra material here. So there's no real way to uh, fit that. So what I need to do now, this is uh, the next step in templating, is cut this template down so that it fits exactly in here, right down along those lines where those edges are. Um, so that then we can really truly mark out where we need to bend those edges. And I can also take this over to the car and verify that it fits the quarter panel properly. So we need to snip this down next. template piece fit down in there better now and I'm obviously off in here I'm using this corner as my data point back here running it across this is about how wide the flange is so I got a trim there we're good there and then the wide flange down here uh, this is where that stretch part is so I'm probably just going to run that straight across for now we'll see I'm not sure 
Uh, it's a little bit complicated in there, but um, I wanted to make that. So then I, the only thing I haven't done is address this back here yet, but I'm not going to address this back here yet. Um, I want to get these uh, pieces trimmed out here first. And then of course I can't bead roll this by myself, so I'll have to have some help for that. Um, but I think, I think we're getting, we're getting pretty close here. So um, yeah, just got to cut these pieces out. Something that I thought might be worth mentioning, you've been seeing me do this, and I, I didn't even put the camera on for this one because you've already seen me cut some curves, but I didn't touch base on this, that you can cut really nice curves with a round cutoff wheel as long as you're not trying to cut it all at once. If you just um, create a path and just go back and forth slowly, and I'll show you here, we'll do this in real time. So I, I start here where I can see. If I start here, the sparks are blowing and I can't see where I'm cutting. So if I start here and I'm real careful and come along and just cut a little groove and then come back and cut a little groove, every pass it gets a little easier because I'm creating a trench for this wheel to flow into. And so just little bits at a time, just little bits at a time. And as you go along there, and again, same thing on curves, Go, pick it up, come back, go, pick it up, come back, go, pick it up, come back. Sometimes you'll see me working it back and forth once I feel it's deep enough, but I wouldn't recommend that as a beginner. Just go, pick it up, come back, go, pick it up and come back, and before long, it'll blow through. If your wheel starts to go through here, but it's not already cut there, pick it up. You don't want to, you don't want to try to force that around that curve because it'll start screwing stuff up because that wheel's wide. You're only intending to use a little teeny bit of that wheel, so just pick it up and just keep working your way through until it falls off. So let's show you here on this straight piece. So when it blows through like that, just pick it up, keep cutting until it starts to go all the way through. Uh, of course, this was a straight, so it wasn't as big a deal, but you see me do the curved ones already, but I thought I'd give you a little bit more about the technique. So uh, yeah, this is a bend in here. I think, like I said, I'm going to probably uh, make this go straight across for now. If I'm going to put that pocket in here where that plug goes, I'll probably weld that in later. I think I'm just going to skip it and just try to put some drains in this. But uh, again, this, this plug was just for assembly. So uh, yeah, so we're getting close. Let's get the other piece over here now and see where we're at. So you can see as we're laying this out, this edge may be off a little bit. If it is, I can just come back in and weld a little piece in here to fix that. So I'm not worried about that. It's really tough to tell with this rusty metal but I've got to get it cut down close. And then our, 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 uh, our edge here is, is close. Um, we're off a little bit on the top, so you can see where this, this line down in here is kind of lining up with this. Again, we're just trying to ballpark everything. This is that assembly uh, plug thing that we're not gonna worry about, and that's what's making this line here not, sorry, that's what making this line here not be straight across. So that line should be straight across, as I mentioned. And then of course down here is where it starts to curve up. And I'm gonna let that go for now. Uh, we'll have to get the quarter panel out and start nipping away, chipping away at getting that lined up. But we're, we're getting close here now. So the next step on this probably is some bead rolling. And I can't do that by myself. So um, I gotta make some determinations where we're going next here. So I decided to go ahead and start laying these out in here. I don't need these per se for cosmetics, but they are there to provide this panel with some strength. So I think we'll go ahead and lay those in there. I'm hoping that I can, when I bead roll this, it doesn't flatten this out. So I kind of need to just 
give myself an idea center to center how these are. That one's about an inch and a half. So from here to there, center line. So this one's obviously, yeah, that's an inch and a half also. So from here to there, again, centered. And then how far are those apart? About five and a half inches. Oh yeah, I screwed that up. It should be there. All right, I gotta DA this down and start over again. It's a beautiful thing about metal and markers. Clean it up, do it over. All right, so I'm getting ready to lay out those beads, but I just wanted to show you that I pulled the quarter panel off. And it's fitting beautifully. Look at that, look at how that edge lines up. So when this when this is, is bent and tipped here, that should follow that contour perfectly. Um, our bottom edge is lining up pretty good. Everything's gonna move around, but I mean, for the most part, for what that is it's really good and of course we still need to come under here and address all of this um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way this is looking so far so it's a uh, big progress and that's the beautiful thing about having this quarter panel to reference is we can just uh, work it fit it make it fit and just keep working it until it fits if for some reason this does not line up the way I want it to. It'll be simple enough to just cut that tipped edge off here. After it's tipped, just cut it off and adjust it as need be. So um, there's, there's lots and lots of forgiveness here in metal to make us do what we want to do. So I'm happy with this. Okay, so the furnace just ran out of propane. It's not fun. And I'm getting the layout done on these. So I got my dimensions. They're about an inch and a half wide. Uh, and then I measured them off. They're about inch and three quarters down from the top. So I'm just gonna draw the straight lines down now. So we know top and bottom where they go. Should have done this before I curved it, I guess, but it'll be all right. Here, this one needs to be about right there. Of course, here. Just go through the top and draw these lines across. Make sure everything is so pathetic or copacetic. And these are way down here, so we gotta play a little dot to dot on that one. Same on that one. Okay, very good. So that's ballparky close enough. Again, if it's eh, eh, who cares? We're, we're not trying to make it look original. We're just trying to give it some strength in there so this panel doesn't oil can. That's the purpose of this. The beads I'll put in there probably won't be exactly like the factory ones. I don't care as long as there's some beads in there to give that panel some strength. The other thing we need to do is double check our curve. You know, see this panel's flattening out from me mucking with it. So I need to bend it a little more, but probably I can do that just by doing this right here because I've already put it in the pipe anvil. Yep, that's better. Could use a little bit more. Close enough to now. I want to make sure that I, I'm probably going to over bend this a little bit when I run those beads in there because it's probably going to have a tendency to flatten it out. And then the other thing I'm going to need to do when I run those beads in there is make sure that I'm working it like this as well. Um, so let me see where we're at here for the day. Like I said, the furnace just ran out. It's getting later in the day than I normally like to work. 
Um, so I got to just see where we're at here and make a determination on what's next. And as I was gathering up all my grinding discs, I just found that I did have a five pack of discs. So now we have a huge pack and a five pack of discs here on my wall. So there we go. But now I can see at a glance what I'm lacking. I'm going to get my blue discs and my purple discs out here also. Well, I think I'm going to cry uncle. My camera battery's dying. I've got over an hour and a half of footage I have to sort through and try to pare that down into about a 30 minute episode. Um, there's another couple of three, four hours of work getting those edge tipped and all of that stuff. Um, there's just a lot. So I think I'm going to make this a part one of building a trunk extension. We'll do it in two or three episodes. But again, we are the channel for the details. As my buddy Ruben says over at Muscle City Madness, this is the my uh, this old house of cars. And uh, a great channel name would be this old car, wouldn't it? But except it'd be these old cars and then it just falls apart. Um, so we really, really, really work to give you step by step how I do things. I want to clarify, this is the way I do it. That doesn't mean it's the right way. It is just a way. Anybody tells you there's only one way to do things when it comes to doing these cars is selling something. So there are people who are legalistic about this, just like there are religious legalistic people and there are political legalistic people and, well, there are legalists everywhere. My point in this channel is to show you alternative ways if you want to put in the time, because it does take time. And I have more time than I have money and brains, so I just put in the time. And I enjoy the fabricating, and I can't emphasize that enough. And I know the old timers on the channel are sick of hearing me say that, but we've got so many new subscribers who've not been involved in this project. I just really want to clarify that again. You figure out what works for you. If you've got a nice big fat checkbook, can we just pay to get all the stuff that you need, then do it. I'm not against it. But if you're like me on a tight budget and you're working on multiple projects and you just thoroughly enjoy creating and don't care about factory original, this is the place for you because uh, that's what we do here. So, all right, I'm going to stop. We're going to make this part one of two or six. I don't know. And we'll go from there. So uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I do appreciate all those of you who have gone above and beyond to support the channel. I've created a new slide to call you guys out by name. You're truly, uh, with skin in the game, supporters of the channel. Everybody that's here supports the channel, but you guys have gone above and beyond. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed at your generosity to make all of this happen. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Hit the bell so you receive notifications. We are in the face place, and we are with your instant grandmother forward slash my car shop. I think we forgot something. What?